Sup guys and welcome to the 30th tutorial in my PHP backend. So in this tutorial uh, we're going to start looking into user authentication and authorization. So just before we do that you're just going to go through some terminology. So user authentication is the action of checking is the user logged in and this is done for identification purposes to identify who they are. And then we also have authorization, which is the action of uh, checking if that identified user, uh, if they're allowed to perform the requested action. So just to, to make a, an example of this, let's say that we have an endpoint that uh, you, can, you can delete the user account. So it might look something like this, like uh, delete slash user and then slash the user ID. So the first thing you need to do is obviously do some kind of authentication, uh, probably in a, in a uh, like a login endpoint where they post their username and password, and um, you check if if they're in the database and if they are in the database, you you give them some kind of token back that you, that they'll use to for uh, identify themselves as the user, and this is authentication. So uh, the next thing you need to do is to check the user that you identified yourself as. Is that user allowed to do this action? So in this case it means we do the authentication in order to figure out what user we are. If we are user 11 then we're authorized to do this because you are only allowed to delete your own account. But let's say that you're not user 11, you're, you're some other kind of user, then you're obviously not authorized to delete user 11's account and for some reason I don't know why but for some reason this is a really common security hole that many uh, novice developers do in their uh, APIs especially they they're really like good at implementing authentication and they even like salt and hash their, their password and fix everything but they don't do, they don't use any kind of authorization so basically what they can do is that you can log in with one user then you just change your user ID and then you can do whatever you want for that user that you change to. So <clears throat> we're going to start looking into the authentication and uh, later uh, in another tutorial we're going to look into authorization. So this tutorial is about authentication. So let's start by looking how it looks in the database. So in here in my database I'm in the users table. You can see I've uh, created a couple of users in here. And uh, you can also see that we have a column here called password. So for this uh, user right here, we have stored the um, password in plain text. And uh, this is obviously super bad practice because if, if someone would, were, would uh, get a hold of your database, they can check all the passwords for all the users. And I mean, these users are probably using this password in every service that they use. So then they can just like propagate and reset their email and then basically steal uh, all stuff for this user. So you don't want to be responsible for, the, for this implementation. You should never put something on a live server that doesn't hash the password. So in the other passwords you can see right here I've implemented uh, hashing. And uh, we're gonna, I'm just going to go quick demonstration of what hashing of password is. And before I do that I'm just going to give a heads up. Hashing and uh, encryption is not the same thing. So if you if you encrypt something, you would get like a similar output like this. But when you encrypt, you can also reverse it back. So for example, you can take this value that you have here and use some kind of key that you're uh, that you have in your application, and you can reverse it back and get the value back. But with hashing that we're going to use for this, you cannot reverse it. And this is also one key point to understand that a hashing uh, is not reversible. When encryption is reversible. So this is really, really important. We're not going to do any kind of encryption. We're, we're going to focus on hashing. And there are different hashing algorithms. There is uh, the SHA, uh, the SHA-1 we're going to use in this tutorial. There is also the SHA-256, I think, and there is, I think, the, the one, another common is MD5. And uh, 
when it comes to password hashing, you should at least uh, use the SHA-1 because that is, uh, I think it's at least 128. So it's not really, this is the length. You can research it, but just like, just use the SHA-1 uh, if you're doing PHP. Don't use MD5 for, for password hashing because it's not, it's not secure enough. So the, so the basic uh, idea behind, behind hashing is that if you take some value, uh, you can go to this website and test it out if you like, if you give it some value and you hash it, you get some gibberish output like this. And uh, the difference is that it's not random at all. It appears that it's random, but the, the, if it were random and I do this multiple times, I get different outputs. But this is not random, this is... Uh, it just scaffolds everything around and put put uh, stuff in there and creates always the same length. I think this is um, this gives me a uh, forty bit long. Uh, I think I'm gonna double check it. Yeah, it gives me it gives me forty forty characters long uh, output, so I know the the length of it. But the important thing is that if I take this and try it another uh, browser, for example it will give me the exact same output as previously. So it's, it's always giving me the same output for the same input. So if I compare these two, they're uh, exactly the same. And this is important. So, and actually this helps us a lot when we do login because we, then we don't need to store the user credentials. So let's say that uh, the user gives us a password like this, user password equals, I don't know, user in input. So we call a function to get the user input, and in here we uh, we store that value. This is this is this variable right here is going to contain the password in plain text that the user is going to give us. So uh, the basic idea about uh, around hashing is if I take this password the user password and uh, I hash it like this uh, is this equal to uh, by the way I'm also gonna take collect the uh, hashed password like this uh, so in this variable, I'm gonna I'm gonna have the hashed password that I'm storing in the database. So it's gonna be this this one right here, the hashed one. Uh, all right. So here we have the plain text uh, password that the user gave us, and here we have the hashed password. So if I take the user password that they give us and I hash it, uh, does this equal the hashed password that I save in the database? And if it is, if this is the same thing, then we know that the user gave us the correct password. And if not, they gave us the wrong password. So this is, um, this is the basic idea around hashing. And this also means that we don't need to store the plain text password and it also means another thing that the thing that they store in here we don't know what it is and we cannot reverse it so if they reset their password we cannot give them the back the password then they need to create another one and uh, so this is the basic idea around how hashing works so thank you guys for watching and I'm going to continue uh, with this topic in the next tutorial. I'm just going to split them up so they don't become too long. And as always, uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.